you hear a lot, um, well, Bitcoin might be a scam or a speculative asset, but blockchain is where all the promise is. No. <laughs> so a bit of history on this one. I've got a, like a video talk I do. I've got like videos on my site, um, which is basically how, what is a blockchain and why is a blockchain? Mm -hmm. So what is a blockchain is super simple, right? It's just a ledger, like an accounting ledger, where you can only add entries. You can't cross out old ones. It's append only. It uses magical mathematical trickery to mean that if you tamper, it's immediately obvious. Anyone can tell, right? It's all cryptographically signed off. You know, each line has a little hash on it. You can tell whether it's been fiddled with. Not what it might have been before, but you can tell it's been messed with. Hmm. So that's what the blockchain does. It's that plus a mechanism to decide who adds the next block or whatever. And proof of work mining is a way to do this without a central controller. That is, you have a whole bunch of guys wasting electricity as fast as they can to try to guess numbers to win a lottery to win the next Bitcoins. And the more lottery tickets you can create with your computers, the more chance you have of winning. And that's why people add more and more computers and it doesn't get any more efficient. And it ends up using a whole country to guess a number every 10 minutes or so. This is the point where people look at me and go, that sounds too stupid. You must be explaining it. <laughs> no, it is actually that stupid. And that's how it literally works. Why does anyone do this? Because they can make money at it. You know, the highest calling in human history is being able to make some money. Right. So therefore, it must be great. And so, yeah. Um, but the thing about... and. Blockchain, as for business, happened after Bitcoin crashed in 2014. <coughs> um, just a second. Mm -hmm. It crashed in 2014, right? Mountain Gox Exchange collapsed. Bitcoin's price plummeted. Um, it then had a sort of bad reputation as this money for crooks and drugs and stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, Bitcoin's first use case was working around government controls, you know, buying drugs right. or more neutrally buying things your government doesn't want you to you know um let's be let's be unduly generous here <laughs> so, but they want people wanted to put it into business big bitcoin people thought maybe we can sell this to the enterprise so they started selling blockchain for business as this thing that would magically make your business work better well what are the details well don't worry about the details. It's trustless, decentralized. They literally <laughs> used the Bitcoin pitch with the buzzword changed. So the point is they put together, when you're selling the sausage, you just need to sell the sizzle. And if the sizzle is good enough, you never, ever need to actually deliver. That's how enterprise blockchain works. There is, I have not seen, speaking as someone who knows about this stuff, there is literally no blockchain use case I've seen that does better than existing systems. Hmm. None. The only use case it has is doing a cryptocurrency. And if you do that, you've got other problems. Right. And I, I just wanted to know, like here in, in Austin, Texas, which is, you know, not sin free when it comes to this stuff. There's this huge ad campaign going on right now, and they'll just big billboards that say "Buy Bitcoin." You don't need to understand it; it makes money, right? You don't and need to understand it; it makes money. <laughs> it reminds me too of like 2017. I was just um, telling Matt this. You know, there was the Long Island Tea Company, right, which was a company that made you know bottled iced teas, and they changed <laughs> their name to the Long Island Blockchain Company, <laughs> and their stock value just skyrocketed. And I and I looked back at the the story until very recently, and they're actually now under investigation by the SEC um, because it definitely looks like they knew what they were doing, um, you know, regarding I mean, insider that's trading, that's basically. Repeatedly. Um, but you can see uh, how people do just attach the term blockchain um, to you know just literally to their business or to some kind mm -hmm. of technology that they're using to make it seem like. It's this big confusing thing that you don't understand, but it's revolutionary. It's going to change the world. And, and oddly, not the people you want to trust are doing that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they use words like trust and trustlessness, a machine for trust. The use of the word trust is that one computer doesn't have to trust the output of another computer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the general English language usage 
of this very specific jargon. Mm-hmm. It's it's bollocks all the way down. Yeah, yeah. This, well, this brings us to the smart contracts, I think, finally, which is like your, your book does such a great a job at explaining the fundamental philosophical error. Like smart contracts are not go- y- Yale law is not like, oh, we're going to have to stop teaching contract dispute law because, you know, smart contracts are going to figure it all out. Tell us why we can expect this not to pan out. <laughs> so smart contracts are not smart. They're not contracts. They are literally little computer programs that live on the blockchain and are triggered by actions on the blockchain. If you're in computing, these are known as database triggers or stored procedures. We don't use them if we can't avoid it because they're very hard to work with and reason with and so forth. Um, You only use them when you absolutely have to. Um, So, of course, they built their entire sort of blockchain economy around them. (laughs) I mean, it's an interesting and clever idea. It's just the reality is very stupid. Mm. So you have these programs that are very hard to change or edit. Uh, The original conception of them was they could not be changed, Um, which is incredibly stupid because, you know, uh, what what do you call a program that can't be changed? A sitting duck for attackers. You know, if you Mm. can't fix bugs, then I can exploit your bugs as soon as I find them. If you can change them, then why the hell are you doing it in in a program you can hardly edit? You know, right? Um, so what we see now, the latest version of this is DeFi, decentralized finance, which is not decentralized in any manner. There are people running it who take the money. Mm-hmm. Um, they do this by putting up smart contracts to automatically run a sort of trading system, so that crypto gamblers can rip each other off and experienced wall street traders can come in find a market which is unregulated and full of suckers giggle hilariously to themselves and take all the money i a lot of my moral drive in writing book was that mums and dads and grandmas and so on would get ripped off by crypto crooks which does happen and you should get angry about it Mm -hmm. if you're going to go on Binance Smart Chain and give all your money to RugPull.Finance, my sympathy is limited. Um, Theft is bad, but I will point and laugh at you. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, DeFi, the great thing about it is it has this very brittle, unforgiving programming model that's very hard to get right, using a terrible language, Solidity, which is if anyone does computers... Like Solidity is like JavaScript, but much, much worse. It's amazing. Um, It is like full of ways to shoot yourself in the foot. So, of course, they process millions of dollars, supposed of money through it. So, yeah. Um, And all the drive is to be first to market. Mm. So taking your time and doing things slowly, that costs money. Mm. And they get auditors to audit the code. Well, in computer science, we have the halting problem, which means you cannot tell what a program will do until you've used it in the general case. In specific cases, you can. In general, you can't. But also, the auditors are usually blockchain clowns as well. So a DeFi contract is correctly viewed as a sort of pinata full of cryptos. And if you whack it the right way, you get the money. <laughs> and this happens over and over. Uh, that... DeFi get hacked or they get hacked, which, um, sorry, all your money is gone. So, yeah, um, it's like an amazing crypto in general is a recapitulation of every financial fraud, scam and grift in 400 years at fast forward. Yeah, I mean, absolutely fascinating. I will never stop watching this while it's going because it's just too hilarious and terrible. Yeah, like that stuff, it, it just, I don't know if you have anything, David, but like the, the the way that I've seen smart contracts pitched versus you see the fundamental reality of it, which is like, yeah, it's computers talking to computers. So if you can trick one of the computers to, you know, um, uh, matching for some reason, the terms of the contract that is immutable mm-hmm. now, then you can't say, oh, actually, that's not what I meant in that contract. I meant something else. I mean, it's just obviously it's, 
that's not the problem with contracts. I mean, it's a game of gotcha. Right. right? Why we typically have like, you know, intelligent, not all lawyers are smart, but you know what I mean? Some smart people on, on both sides of it trying to make sure that you're not getting screwed by some kind of really, really obscure interpretation of the piece of paper that, that you're signing. Um, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, you know it in your book, and I'm sorry, I can't share it on the screen because it's uh, on my other computer, um, but you know uh, a quote from uh, Matt Levine. Uh, from Bloomberg that says, you know, yeah. my immutable, unforgivable, uh, cryptographically secure blockchain record proving that I have 10,000 pounds of aluminum in a warehouse is not much use to a bank if I then smuggle the aluminum out of the warehouse through the back door, right? right? And which is one of the big points that you're noting is that, you know, you can even set these things up, uh, you know, through code. And I, I know there's some problems with the code itself, but its relationship to the actual like physical world <laughs> um, is, is not that, uh, you know, is not that tight. Yeah, the way they solve this is to use oracles, which provide data to the smart contract so it can do things based on the data. <coughs> so one of the standard smart contract attacks is rig the oracle. Make sure the oracle goes funny. Or do something like flood Ethereum with transactions so that the oracle fails, all the numbers come to zero, everyone else washes out and you get the money. <laughs> it's just stupid. But, you know, there's money to be made. Right. Yeah. Not I mean, them, by someone. the marketing of it, I mean, you really see like this is just when I read about like this, the settling of America and boosters talking about land that's just amazing to grow. Like that's just this is just where we're at uh, now with Bitcoin. Bitcoin.